The ROG Ally just got one of the most anticipated features yet. Are you ready for a big boost in your FPS? I am. Are you? Let's be AM yes. AFMF update is here, you guys. So grab your Ally, download the latest GPU driver, and come on a journey with us. More frames, more games. Um, let's start by talking a little bit about what frame generation is. So AFMF is a feature, but it's under this larger umbrella of technologies called frame generation. Frame generation is a graphics technology that um, intelligently generates new frames in between traditionally rendered frames. So in a traditional render pipeline, the GPU is basically drawing each frame from scratch on your screen. It says, okay, there's a tree over here and there's your character here in this stance, there's an NPC over here, and it draws all that from scratch every single time, every single frame. And it takes a certain amount of time for the GPU to manually draw each frame, giving you what we call a frame rate, the rate at which it can render new frames, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second. So uh, I grabbed this image from the PC gaming wiki, and I think I, I'm hoping that this can kind of act as a visual aid to, to sort of demonstrate this. Let's say that you are rendering a game at 30 frames per second. That's like this top line here. Each of these dark blue frames is one traditionally rendered frame. Frame generation basically wedges itself in between each of those frames and uses the surrounding frames to kind of approximate what the in-between frame would look like, right? Mm. So one frame, your character's like this, and the next frame, your character's like this. Frame generation is like, okay, in this frame, in the frame in between, it's probably somewhere here in the middle. So now look at the second line. Let's say that the, all the dark blue frames are the traditionally rendered frames. The light blue frames would be the interpolated frames or the generated frames. As a result, as you can see, it's adding many more frames to the pipe. Uh, the more frames you have, the smoother motion looks but it's doing that without using as much GPU power as it would drawing those frames from scratch. So it's kind of similar if you've ever used the motion smoothing uh, feature on your TV, it's kind of like that, only better because A, movies don't tend to look great with that turned on, but smoother visuals and games do look good. And it's also more integrated into the graphics pipeline. Um, so, you're you're you know you're not getting as many artifacts and things like that and the input lag that you would on a tv that doesn't really know it's kind of just going as it goes mm -hmm. so amd has two frame generation technologies the first is called fsr3 frame generation this has been available on the ally for a while now um and i think we have a video kind of show, showing it off but the way it works is that it's built into the game itself you go into the graphic settings of your game, you turn on FSR3 frame generation, um, and then it will boost your frame rate like you're seeing here in Immortals of Avium. Um, now, because it's built into the game itself, it has a lot of information about those frames as it's working. It knows, it has motion vectors. It knows what direction your character is moving. It knows which elements on screen are part of the UI, like the minimap, and, and it can ignore those. Um, so FSR3 ends up providing a very good experience with relatively low latency and fewer artifacts, like, say, the, the motion smoothing on your TV, like I said. And FSR3.1, which is coming soon, promises to be even better, and we should start seeing that come to games in the near future. But that's the rub. It has to be integrated into the game by the developer, meaning you can't just turn on FSR3 in any game you want only in games that, that it actually has built in. So AMD built a second option for games that don't support FSR3. It is called AMD Fluid Motion Frames, or AFMF, and that is what released for the Ally today or yesterday. This is similar technology, um, but unlike FSR3, so this video is of FSR3. I think we have one of AFMF2, oh, the bad. next one. That's okay. Um, AFMF is not built into the game itself, but it's built into the driver, which means that you can turn it on for a much, much wider variety of games. Not necessarily every game. Like, I don't think it works with super old games. I think it's like DirectX 11 and above. Um, and there are some other kind of caveats, but, but for the most part, it works with a much, much wider variety of games because the developer doesn't have to build it into their game. The driver just looks at the information on screen and generates new frames as you go. Now, that does mean it doesn't have quite as much information to work with as FSR3, but it also has much wider compatibility. Hmm. So the short it's version huge. is... 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's awesome. Um, and that's something that not a lot of other people who are playing with frame, frame generation are necessarily doing right now. So if your game supports FSR 3, you'll want to use that. It'll be the better experience. If your game doesn't support FSR 3 and you want that, that, though, that extra smoothness, try turning on AFMF. And we're going to show you how to do that today. So I'm going to actually start up this game real quick. We're going to be looking at The Witcher 3 today. Um, we looked at this last time when we were talking about RSR, and I think this is actually a pretty good game for this because The Witcher 3 is... Um, it's it's older, so it doesn't have like FSR 3 built in, but it did recently get a next-gen update. So the graphics... Um, have been kind of boosted and it's still not uh, it's not like an older game where it's super easy to run and you're just going to get like a thousand frames per second in it right it's also um, a, a, an open world game where it's always yeah. a little more taxing on the GPU so or CPU both um, it's also an incredible game so if you still haven't played this you really should um, I honestly am getting ready to like dive into this again it's such a good game so this is the Z1 Extreme and you'll see that I'm getting a little under 60 frames per second in this little area here this is from the blood and wine dlc not bad 60 frames per second especially on the allies FreeSync premium screen looks really good super smooth probably smoother than what you're seeing on stream right now just because of it's not gonna it's not gonna sync the frames perfectly but right. on the allies screen it looks excellent now if you want to use afmf there are a few things you need to set properly in the game first so let's go to the witcher 3's display settings uh, video display. So first, you want to make sure that you are running in exclusive full screen mode. AFMF does not work with games running in windowed mode. So we've got full screen set here. You also want the uh, the uh, refresh rate set to 120 hertz, which is the native re uh, refresh rate of the Allies display. And finally, you'll want to turn VSync off. Um, since we have a FreeSync premium display in the Ally, that shouldn't matter a huge amount. You're not going to see a lot of screen tearing. But if your game goes over 120 frames per second with frame generation, then you may start to see screen tearing. So what you may, if, if you have a game that with frame generation is, is pushing the frames that high, you may want to set an FPS cap around 60 for your base frame rate, which means that then it's going to keep it under, with frame generation, it'll stay under that 120 uh, hertz mark and, and you won't have any of that tearing so you may want to do that depending on the game on the ally you're probably not going to run into that a ton because any games that run that well you're probably not going to be using frame generation anyway now uh oh, there's my mouse just to answer the question in chat this is the z1 extreme the more expensive version yes. of the ally yep now as a result of these requirements there are some other games that afmf may not work with so if you have a game that's internally locked to 60 hertz um, it's not going to let you go above that with AFMF because it's locking your screen at a, at a lower um, refresh rate. So there are some things like that that might produce some incompatibilities here and there, but most, um, most games are going to let you do what you need to do. Also, the higher the base frame rate you start with, the better. Um, so AFMF is not ideal if your game is running at like 20 frames per second. You're going to want to decrease those graphic settings right. to get your frame rate higher for the best end result. The more data it has to work with, the better the, the final product is. So what I've done with this game, um, I have turned some of the graphic settings down. I've still, I've still got the important stuff on like SSAO and whatnot. And I've turned FSR2 on to balance just so we can get that near 60 frames per second uh, frame rate for this demo. Okay. All right. So... That's The Witcher 3 without AFMF. I'm now going to quit the game, and we're going to turn AFMF on. So I saw anywhere between 52 and 60 FPS, probably an average of 55, 57. Yep. Now, uh, if you're doing this at the time of recording this video, make sure that your ally is up to date. Um, the new graphics driver is important, and the latest version of Armory Crate you're going to want for AFMF. Mm. Then, uh, you can either go from the Start menu, or you can click the little notification area here and open the AMD software Adrenaline Edition. Now, this is not built into the command center on the Ally just yet, but we are working on that, so stay tuned. Right now, you do have to open this up to turn on AMD Fluid Motion Frames. So you're going to go to the Gaming tab up here, and then the Graphics tab. Scroll on down, and here you go. AMD Fluid Motion Frames. Flip that on. You're good. Now, before we continue, there's one other thing that you need to know. Due to the way that AFMF currently works at the time of us filming this video, 
you won't be able to use the Allies um, real-time monitor to monitor your frame rate with AFMF on. AFMF is currently only compatible with AMD's own performance overlay. That may change in the future, but that's the way it is right now. So if you want to keep an eye on your FPS and your temperatures, etc., cetera, uh, go into the AMD software, go to the performance tab up here, and then over under overlay, you can turn this on to enable the metrics overlay, and then you can customize it and stuff as well. Um, if you are using a different overlay, you'll find that your frame rate does not go up with AFMF turned on. The reason is because you got to use this overlay in order to see the full frame rate, mm. at least at the time of filming this video. So AFMF is now turned on. We've got our AMD overlay. Let's start The Witcher 3 back up and see what happens to our performance. You will see the AMD Fluid Motion Frames has its little green check mark that shows it's enabled. If you have the kind of AMD overlay turned on in its settings, you'll see that when you start the game. And let's check this out. Here we go. All right, so you can see our frame rate has jumped up significantly. We're now at like 80, 85, close to 90 frames per second in the same little area that I was before. That's um, huge. Now, yeah, it is. That's a huge difference. And um, now, again, you're seeing this on stream, so things aren't quite syncing up properly. You've got streaming compression. But when I'm looking at it on the Allies screen, it does look significantly smoother. And again, because it's using that FreeSync uh, premium dis display, it's not going to be showing screen tearing or anything like that. That's just from the capture card. That 80 to 90 frames per second is what I'm seeing with my eyes in person. It's, nice boost. Yeah, perfect timing on the internet to lag there. Um, as soon as we get to the actual I, yeah, like game demo, it's just, but it's okay. No, but what, but look at the, like, don't look at the video, look at the numbers of what you're seeing and you'll see that it's noticeably better. Um, now, why is it not exactly double the frame rate that we were getting earlier? There is some GPU overhead for AFMF to work, right? So what you'll see is it's either not double, or like I said, if you're using a different overlay, it's only going to show your base frame rate mm -hmm. and you'll actually see your frame rate go down a little bit with AFMF. That doesn't mean that the frames you're seeing are lower. It means the base frame rate is lower because it's actually giving a little bit of that GPU overhead to AFMF. But the amount of GPU power it takes to generate these interpolated frames is much lower than the amount of GPU power it takes to render traditional frames. Very so cool. your final frame rate is still going to be much, much, much higher. Um, it's not going to be twice as high, but it's going to be I mean, noticeably higher. You just gained like over 30 FPS with the yeah. clip of the switch. Like that's amazing. Exactly. So um, now in terms of what games work well with AFMF, that's something that I recommend trying out yourself. A lot of this is really up to personal preference and interpretation. Um, some people may find that games with really twitchy motion, um, they don't like the interpolated frames as well. Some people don't care at all. They like it on and everything. I've heard good things about it in uh, like GTA 5. I think Forza Horizon 5 is probably a good candidate. I think I saw someone mention that they were using it with Spider-Man. Um, I haven't tried all of these games myself, even though those are like two of my favorite games right there. But the answer is to try it out with the games you're playing and see which ones produce results that look good to you. Ultimately, like, I got to hand it to AMD, man. They are really good at providing just a sheer number of options to as many people as they can, right? right. This is what PC gaming is all about. It, what, it's what, to me, has made PC the superior platform for decades and continues to do so to this day. Um, we've got FSR 3, which is available even if you don't have an AMD graphics card. If you do have an AMD graphics card, AFMF expands the number of games that you can use frame generation with. That is huge for user choice. It's why I'm such a fan of being a PC gamer um, and and why this is just, AMD's really killing it in, well, in that yeah, particular Yeah, if you're using a console space. and you're getting a bad frame rate, tough luck. But things can be expanded and improved upon in all kinds of ways with tools like this. And you can so. set the graphics to fit whatever you want with or without frame generation. Right. So if you want more information on FSR3 and AFMF, we've written an article that details much of what we went through today with actually a little bit more detail. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. Um, as usual, guys, this is just a part of our show. If you want to see the full stream with even more content, subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels. We stream this show, ROG Pulse, every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. We do walkthroughs. We do other guides. We do product unboxings when new stuff comes out. And we also streams game, stream games to Twitch, soon to also be YouTube. Follow us on social media. You can join our Discord to stay up to date with the latest news and announcements or get help with your ally if you're trying to figure something out on your own computer or device. The Discord is a great place to do that.